You know, I'm not going to hold you long. I just got what they call a mini sermon this morning. It may not turn out to be a such a mini sermon, but that's what I got. Uh, if you would stand with me and turn with me to Matthew chapter 10. Mm. Matthew chapter 10, beginning in the first verse. I titled this message this morning, The Source of Power. You get there, say amen. Matthew chapter 10, verse 1. It says, And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Verse number two. It talks about the twelve, the names of the twelve. Jump down to verse number five. It's, it says that these twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go ye into the way of the Gentiles and into the city of some Samaritans, enter ye not, but go, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, kingdom of, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out devils. Freely you have received, and freely give. Father, I thank you this morning for these people that's coming to your house. Lord, I ask you, God, that you would touch and you would minister to each and every one of them here today, God. And Lord, that you would move in this house. Father, I feel you this morning. And I thank you, God, for that Holy Ghost that's dwelling in this house today, God. I ask you, Lord, that you would feel those that need feeling this morning and you would touch those that need touching this morning. And God, I pray right now that you hide me behind this sacred desk, God, and not let them look at me, but feel your presence and, and honor you this morning, and I give you the praise you. in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. You know, when I said the source of power, you think about a lot of people are carnally minded, and they'll, they'll think about, well, you know, I get my power from Gulf Power over there or, or the electric company down there. But that's power for you. Whatever you need to sustain uh, your family and all. You know, you got dishwashers. You got all kind of stuff now. They even got electric vehicles now. That's a power source. But what kind of power do you have for your soul? Think about this this morning. Jesus is telling them to go out. He says, I give you the power to go out there and to heal each and everything that's wrong with them. You have that power. That's the power that comes only from God. And it's a power that we need to sustain this soul. You see, whenever we die, Sister Carolyn, we're going to lay in that casket and that old body's going to be just decayed. You know, it's just going to rot away in that casket. But that soul, that soul, when you close them eyes, that soul was raised up. It, it's there. And you know, I thank God this morning that, that we, that God has given us the power. You see, he not only uh, sent his disciples out, but we're his disciples also. And he gave us that same power that he gave his disciples to lay hands on the sick. What does James chapter 5 say? says, call on the elders of the church. Lay hands on the sick and pray for them that they'll be healed. It says, anoint them with oil. And that's what we do. That's, that's, why do we do that? Because that's the word of God. That's what we're to follow. And that's the thing that, that we need to do. But in, in 1 Samuel 23, it talks about Shammah. If you would, turn there with me. 1 Samuel chapter 23. I might need to put my glasses on. Verse 
beginning in verse 8. And it talks about it talks about David and the mighty men that David had in his army. You know, and, and in particular this this one one soldier that was in David's army, he he was one of David, he was one of the thirty, he was one of David's <coughs> mighty men. That would be just like a green beret in our army today. He was special. Why? Because of his bravery and everything. But in, in verse 8, it starts like this, and it talks about the names of the mighty men whom David had, the Tetumite, that sat in the seat, chief among his, the captains, and spent, and the same with Adano, the, the Edomite, he lifted up his spear against 800, whom he slew at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the Ahorite, one of the three mighty men with David. When they defied the Philistines that were there gathered together to battle, and the men of Israel, I should have brought my other glasses, and the men of Israel was gone away, that he arose and smote the Philistines until the hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword, and the Lord brought a great victory that day. And the people returned after him only to spoil. And after him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Horite. And the Philistines were gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of the lilies. Now you think about this whenever it says that. You think about if you're out there and, and I don't know if we have any farmers in here, but when you're out there and, and you till the ground and you go and you plant your peas, that's what the word little means. It talks about peas. And they've been out there and Shama standing out there in the middle of them in, in the midst of the field. And here comes the Philistines. They come in and they run everybody off. Shama stood his ground. He stood, the Bible says, in the midst of the little patch, patch, the pea patch, in other words, and he fought the Philistine, and the Bible said that he slew every one of them that tried to come in and to take what he had worked for. Now, the enemy's good at that. He'll come in, and he'll try to destroy you. Stacy, he'll try to take away everything that God has done for you and everything that you've tried to do for the Lord. He'll try to destroy it. But the Bible says that, that he can't destroy it if you're a child of God. Yeah. God's not going to allow him to come in to destroy you. So you think about this this morning. We need to stand our ground when the enemy comes in to take possession of something that we work so hard for in our lives. To take possession of that very thing that sustains us, the food that God allowed us to plant and to harvest. The enemy's going to come in and try to take everything. There's all types of food, spiritual food. And if, for example, the enemy will come in and try to tell you, you don't need to listen. You don't need to come to church. You don't need to listen to some preacher up there running his mouth because all he'll do is get up there and run his mouth. But I want to tell you something this morning. I feel God in this house. And I know I can stand up here and run my mouth all day, but it ain't about me. It's all about God and what He can do for us and the way that He sustains us. Amen. I thought I'd get an amen out there. Amen. 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 But you know, even, even in the book of Daniel, chapter 6, where, where they threw Daniel in the lion's den, Daniel wasn't afraid. Why was Daniel afraid? Wouldn't afraid. Because God took the fear out of him. What does Hebrews say about fear? That God didn't give us the spirit of fear, but of love, power, and of a sound mind. And we need to adhere and listen to what God has given us. Uh, sometimes I I fear things in life. I, I don't like to go to the doctor and I get all upset 
uh, Brother White, to the point to where it causes me to, to fear, you know. But really, I don't have nothing to fear. Why? Because I'm a child of a most high God. Amen. I'm a child that loves the Lord, and he loves me, and he's going to see me through my situation. Why? Because I give it to him. Amen. I let him take care of it. And I've said this time and time again, anything that we commit into the hands of God, the Bible says that no man, Sister White, nothing can pluck us out of the hand of God. Yeah. Why? Because we're his children. Yeah. That blood has been applied to that doorpost. Yes. The, the enemy's got to pass us by. The death angel's got to pass us by. Why? Because we do what God wants us to do. Daniel in that lion's den. Daniel didn't fear uh, whenever whenever they threw him in that lion's den. He wasn't worried about it. In fact, Daniel just laid there and he went to sleep. And the king, it was a king that was worrying because he knew he had done wrong when he threw Daniel in there. And, and the king couldn't wait till the morning come. And he told him, he said, go Go see if Daniel's all right. Go get Daniel out of that lion's den. And what happened? After all that, God showed his power. God showed his strength. Whenever they took Daniel out of that lion's den, that king not only realized that he was a child of God, that Daniel was a child of God, and Daniel prayed God every day. He would leave his windows open and he would pray. And, and they would hear him praying, Sister White. And they knew that he was a child of God. And that king realized that the mistake that he had made and he, he gave Daniel a lot of land. He made him ruler over the whole kingdom there other, under him. Why? Because of what God had done in Daniel's life. And God convicted that old king. He prayed too. He 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 brought he brought conviction on that old king because of what he done. And if you go back to Daniel chapter three, talk about the three Hebrew children. Mm -hmm. Whenever whenever they were thrown into that fiery furnace, you know, we we know the story. But go back to the beginning of it. Why were they thrown into that fiery furnace? Because they wouldn't they bow down. down. They wouldn't bow down to a man-made uh, idol. And they, they told that king, said, says, old king, said, live forever. Said, but, he said, but, we'll not bow down to your idol. We'll not do that. Said, well, you can kill us if you want to, but we serve a God. I'm, I'm paraphrasing. We serve a God that is able to deliver us. Amen. I want to tell you this morning, we serve a God that is able yes, you, in all situations Thank to you. deliver us. Amen. We may not be a shammer. We may not take a sword and kill thousands. But yet, God can give us the power to do that if need be. So, the, the three Hebrew children they didn't. They didn't bow down. No, sir. You know they. They. Uh, didn't go to chapter three. Mm -hmm. Daniel. We all know the story, but I, I just want to read. I can find my glasses. Oh, yeah. Right here. Oh. <laughs> Why do y'all do that? Chapter 3, beginning in verse 13. So then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And then they brought these men before the king. Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? Do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image which I have set up? Now if ye be ready, 
at, at what time you hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, psaltery, and December said in all kinds of music, you fall down and worship the image which I have made. So they wanted to, to play a little bit of music. And when they heard that music, I'm just paraphrasing, trying to explain it to you. When they heard that music, they were supposed to bow down and to worship that golden image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. But it goes on to say, but if, if, but if you, if you worship not, you shall be cast into a into the midst of a burning fiery furnace, and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? Who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hand? I want to tell you this morning, I know who he is because I feel him every day. When I lift up my heart to him, Sister Carolyn, I feel that God, I know who that God is. He's the author and the finisher of my faith. He is my strength in troubled times. He is the one that I've run to. My, my, my. Anyway, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us Amen. from the burning fiery furnace. Amen. And what happened with the rest of the story? Amen. What did God do? Amen. Some people say, well, God showed up and he showed out. No, God showed up and he let them out. Yes. He took them out. You. you see, Stacy, when God shows up, when we pray and seek his face and he shows up, and when he gets us out of that fiery furnace, he'll, he'll let the people know just because we was in that furnace, you know, we go through trials. Yeah. Whenever uh, you you melt gold down, what do you what does it do? Whenever you take and you put the gold in a in a fiery furnace to uh, so to kill, good. so to speak, and it melts it down, what is it doing? It's, all the it's taking out. all the impurities out of it. Now, when these kids were in that fiery furnace there, the Bible says that old Nebuchadnezzar sitting on his throne there, he looked down into that furnace and he seen four kids running around, loose. See, when they put them in there, they were bound up. They would tie them up, throw them in there. But yet, when he looked down and he seen them, they were loose, running around in there. And he said, did I not throw three men in there? Who is the fourth one? He said, it looks like the son of the living God. Amen. Now this is a king that, that didn't, didn't believe in God, didn't, didn't, didn't know God as, a, as, as we know him today. That's why he built that idol. He wanted people to, to idolize him. He wanted people to let, let, he wanted them to know that he was king and he was God over them. But it wasn't so and it didn't turn out that way. Right. You see, there's a lot of things in this world that would like to make, make them God over, over us. There, there's all kind of stuff, all kind of situations to where we turn to other things. Instead of turning to God, we make these other things our God that shouldn't even be in our lives, but yet we make them our gods and we turn to them for comfort and peace. Whenever we ought to be turning our heads up to God and lifting up our hearts to Him and let Him take care of our problem, let, let us put our situation into His hand so that He can take care of it and not let us try to take care of it ourselves because I want to tell you we're going to make a mess of it. I'm going to make a mess of it. If I try to go out there and do the job of a doctor and I'm not a doctor by no means and I can't be a doctor unless God gives me the ability. Amen. People need to realize we serve a God, an awesome God, a God that's only sitting by the right hand of the Father. That's the only God that we serve today. Yes. These three Hebrew children said you can kill us if you want to. He said, but our God will take us out of this situation. Amen. He'll lift us up. Amen. 
Think about Shamma standing in the middle of that pea patch, Brother Pharaoh. Yes, sir. They worked all day. And they look out there and they see the Philistines coming toward them. All of them that was there to harvest the peas took off a running. They left. They left Shamma out there by himself with just him and his sword. He wasn't by his and the Bible says that he defeated the Philistines. Mm -hmm. He retained that that God gave him. Yeah. There's a lot of people whenever the enemy comes, just like those that were there with Shammah. Whenever the enemy comes, they seem to flee away from God. Yep. They turn to the world sure. to help their help their situation. They they turn to drugs or alcohol, whatever it may be. They'll turn to that to, to get that satisfaction that they want. Why? Because they're afraid. They're afraid that somebody, somebody's going to see them, somebody's going to uh, talk about them or something like that. But I want to tell you, the Bible says, if you're ashamed of me, we're talking about God, says, if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father, Amen. which is in heaven. So I'm going to tell you this morning, don't be ashamed to praise the Lord. Don't be ashamed to lift your heart up to God. Don't be ashamed to let people see Christ in you. The Bible says, let your light so shine that men can see. I'm not wearing no halo this morning. You can't see no halo on me. But if you look into this heart, if you look into this heart, I guarantee you, you can see God in this heart. Amen. Yeah. He said, if you honor me, if you do what I tell you, if you live by my rules, he says, I'll give you the desire of your heart. Amen. I looked at Stacy this morning and Tristan there, and I know, I know, there's a lot that went on there. And Stacy and Tristan, God has brought you together because that desire that that father had for that son. Mm -hmm. You think about God and Jesus. God made Jesus ruler over the earth. As long as he done what the Father said, and the Bible says there was no sin in him. In fact, he done he done just just what the Father said. And what happened when they crucified him? Even on the cross, one of the old sinners. Ask for forgiveness. Yeah. And Jesus told him, said, this day, he knew, Brother White, that, that that was about the end. But he said, this day, you will be with me in paradise. Mm -hmm. What has that got to do with power? What happened whenever Jesus died on that cross? <coughs> the Bible says that the day turned to night. The ground shook. The curtain in the tent was rent in two. That was power. That was the power of God showing them what a mistake that they had made. But yet it was ordained of God for it to happen that way. You see, there's things in our life that we don't we can't see it. We don't know that God is ordained in our lives. But the enemy, the enemy has a job to do. And he's good at his job. I want to tell you, he's real good at his job. Because sometimes I just want to, I just want to throw up my hands and walk away. 
But God called me to preach. He called me to preach this one and to do what he wants me to do. Amen. And if I threw up my hands and walked away, I would be giving in to what the enemy wants. So you think about this this morning. God has spoke to your heart. He gives you a reason to press on. Paul said, I press for the mark. You know, what's the mark in your life? Paul's mark was Christ Jesus. That should be every one of our goals, is to reach that that Paul was headed for. So he told Timothy, he said, Timothy, you preach. Did you preach the word? You know, on my on my card here, it says this, Mark 16 and 15. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel. Go into all the world. Yeah. and preach the gospel. How do we do that? We can preach here. We may not be Jimmy Swagger and not able to go all of these different countries and all these different places. But yet when we preach that word, the Bible says that this word will go out and what? It won't return the boy. So when we preach this word, you're a living epistle of God. When you go out, people should see Christ in you. If they don't, then we may need to check ourselves. We, we may, need, may need to come back to an old-fashioned altar and repent and give our hearts and our lives back to God. Because sometimes, without even knowing we wander off in the wrong direction. Not not really caring or, or doing what God wants us to do. You know, I, I, I felt like sometimes the enemy, the enemy don't want me to study. But what does the Bible say? Study to show yourself. We need to study. We need to get that word into our heart and let the enemy know you see we get weak we get weak sometimes what happens when we get weak 1 Peter 5 and 8 says this be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil Walking about, seeking, seeking who we may devour. When an animal gets weak, brother, wife, and the old lion looks out there in the herd, he can tell the weakest one that's out there, and that's the one he preys on, the one that's the weakest. So today, and I'm, I could go on and on, but I'm not. I'm going to quit. Today, if you need something from the Lord, we're going to give you an opportunity to come to these altars and give. Rededicate your heart if you need to. Whatever you need today, God is able and he's here to help you do or achieve whatever it is that you need in this life. You know, <clears throat> you say, well, Preacher, I, I really don't need nothing. I, I'm doing pretty good now. I may be, you know, uh, lukewarm. I may be just straddled the fence. But I'm doing pretty good. You may be doing good now. But what does it say about lukewarmness? He said, I'll spew you out of my mouth. So you either got to get off the fence, get on one side or the other. And let God know that you're his child. And he already knows in your heart. He knows.
knows who you are. He knows it. He knows your DNA. He knows everything about you. Let Jesus fix so whatever you have me of this morning. Let Jesus fix it.
let him have his way. Just like the song says, whenever you pray, let him have his way. Thank you. 